if uh, Republicans want to make inroads among Hispanic voters, remember Mitt Romney only got 27% in 2012, they could take a lesson from Texas. A recent Gallup poll found that in the Lone Star State, Democrats hold only a 19% advantage among Hispanic voters. Nationwide, that advantage is 30%. So why do we see these numbers? It's because in Texas, spending time in the Hispanic community, engaging with Latino leaders and voters on a daily basis is a practice that's ingrained in the Republican Party. And according to Republican pollster Whit Ayers, something that could pay off for Republicans if they took the Texas model nationwide. All right, folks, will that work? We'll get to our guest in a second. Uh, before, though, we do that, I want to uh, tell you about a great book by Newsmax contributor and political analyst Dick Morris. Of course, you know it's called Power Grab, Obama's Dangerous Plan for a One-Party Nation. I strongly urge you to get a copy of this number one Amazon bestseller. Go to powergrab.com. I'm sorry, powergrab411.com to get your copy now. Once again, that's powergrab411.com. John Jordan, CEO of the Jordan Winery in California and member of the Hoover Institute's Board of Overseers at Stanford University joins us. John, um, the Republicans and the Hispanics, you know, there's a, a news today that John Boehner is going to take a symbolic vote in the House denouncing uh, Obama's uh, amnesty uh, executive order, but then go ahead and, and push for funding of it, at least for the rest of this year anyway. What, what should Republicans do when it comes to this executive order? How did this go over in the Hispanic community? Well, first of all, it's important to realize that what Obama did with the executive order, it, leaving aside the lawlessness and unconstitutionality aside for a moment, basically what he did is he set a political trap for Republicans. Obama meant what he said when he said he meant to remake and um, transform America and transforming the electorate and rigging elections going forward so the Republicans cannot win is really how he sees his legacy. So first of all, Republicans need to watch their tone. Their response to this needs to be one of responding to this as a constitutional and a legal issue, not being anti-immigrant. Further, discussions of border security needs to not be geared towards not, not fall in the trap and utter you know, probably unfortunate hyperbole, which is going to further thrust the Latino vote into the arms of the Democrats. But talk about border security as a matter of national security. Surveys of Latino voters have consistently shown that they'll un they understand and agree with that. So it's, again, it's, it's, it's a question of tone and how these issues are put forth. Yeah, and there's a poll out today from Quinnipiac that shows that in a year, support for a uh, uh, path to citizenship for illegals in this country has gone from 57% support last year in November down to 48% uh, in the wake of Obama's executive order. So I think that uh, there are many uh, in, in all communities around the country that are very unhappy with what Obama did. Yeah, they're, very, they're all very unhappy, with it, but it's how we combat it and how um, those on the center right talk about it. It's very important that we not further, throw, not further give the Democrats ammunition to demonize Republicans in Latino eyes. All right. So um, when, it, uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, going forward and, and, and reaching uh, Latino voters, well, aren't the priorities of Latino voters the same uh, as the priorities of, of everyone else in this country? Isn't this this immigration issue really an overblown media created issue? Because when you looked at the exit polls from 012 for Latinos, immigration reform was like five on their list. Yes, it is. But the, 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 the trick to understanding this is to see in their eyes and surveys have borne this out, survey after survey, is that immigration is a, uh, an attitude towards um, immigrants is a threshold issue for Latinos. So, for example, if 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 you if you are deemed acceptable in terms of not being them not seeing you as hating them and their friends and family, um, you know then they're open to Republican arguments. But until until we get past how the Democrats have labeled Republican candidates, um, it's going to be hard to access that vote. So think of it just as a threshold issue. Yeah, well, uh, it's it's interesting because if we have to overcome the labels uh, of the media and the Democrats. Uh, uh, we're in trouble unless we get candidates uh, who fight back and unless uh, Republicans are smart enough to put forth people like Suzanne Martinez and yeah. others and say, hey, you know, uh, we're Hispanic, we're Republicans, and here's why. But, uh, John, always good to talk to you. Thank you very much, sir. My pleasure. Good to be there. Thank you. John Jordan, ladies and gentlemen. It's very interesting, uh, the Hispanic issue. And uh, one wonders how Jeb Bush uh, would do with uh, Hispanic voters although I don't think he's getting the nomination by any long shot. I don't think uh, conservatives are going to vote for, uh, for Jeb Bush to be their 
presidential nominee. Uh, it's that time of day again, folks. The closing bell report with our own Newsmax financial editor, Robert Williams. He's next. Don't go away.